specific plans do you have upon release, if we grant your parole? Don't forget you had me protecting you in there, man. You owe me. That plan you talked about, let's do it. Get them to commit. They have something to lose right there. Throw them in the back of a van. Husband force over the door. Easy money. Don't you ever think that all of this might come back around? Ain't nothing gonna happen to nobody. It's life if we get caught. We're not getting caught. I'm doing great, Marcus. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, how are you holding up during the quarantine? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, plenty of stuff to do. We just had a little baby, so we got we got our hands full for sure. Um, and just trying to get this, you know, get this film out and oh, some other stuff on the books too. So yeah, plenty of well, stuff to do. We're fine. Well, this is this is the time for all these VOD and independent filmmakers because no studio films are coming out, and so many guys like yeah. you. They're getting all the attention right now. So this is, you know, it's, unfortunately, it's you know, pandemic, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, a luck of uh, good fortune for you. So, well, thanks for, talking, like that, yeah. thanks for talking to me today about uh, Chameleon. And it tells the story of two ex-cons who scam L.A. trophy wives and their rich older husbands. Um, but this is like an L.A. story at heart, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's... Uh... It, it, it begins and ends in Los Angeles, but kind of the middle of the film is really about what is around LA as far as geographical, you know, uh, you got Big Bear, you've got Ojai, you've got Palm Springs, you've got Santa Barbara. Um, you know, so before we started shooting this, I was like, why aren't we using all these locations? This place is beautiful. You know, <laughs> let's go ahead and try to figure something out here with that. But, but yes, it is about Los Angeles and kind of uh, it begins and ends with, with, that, uh, with that place. It's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm a Las Vegas native and uh, in the opening of your film, uh, you have uh, uh, Patrick walking by the Saharan Hotel. I've stayed there like a dozen times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, I would say that, that, that first five minutes of the film was shot about a year before the rest of it. And that's really just me and Joel uh, in a camera. And we were walking up and down Hollywood waiting for the sun to kind of start going down. and we were going to do another hotel up the street and then we went to go shoot. And it's like, no, nah, this isn't quite it. And then we go up the street to see the Sahara and I'm like, just a pure accident as far as why don't we shoot this? And it, the, the, the light was nice and all that. So, so yeah, great, great. Uh, that, that hotel looks great on camera. Looks great on camera. And what I love about Patrick, uh, his story arc, you know, once a criminal, always a criminal, but he has a change of heart. So, you know, it's funny because that dishwashing scene, um, uh, it's not the, the newest, most freshest idea for a story scene or for an inciting incident, but I, I basically, I just couldn't stop thinking about that scene from heat. Um, when, uh, what's his name? The, the, the all state guy. Not, yeah. The, the, uh, the, uh, the guy that ends up being the getaway driver in heat, you know, he's trying to do well at the, uh, diner and right, his right, boss right. Is, a, is a jerk and he just knows that he's not going to be able to do anything in this straight life. So for me, it was like that combined with, um, uh, you know, just uh, washing dishes myself back in the day and just being like, this isn't going to get me anywhere. You know, I think um, it's all about him trying at first to try to be a straight guy and to try to, um, you know, do right by society. But clearly society doesn't want him. And that couple with Dolph getting out and coming to see him and he owes him a debt just kind of made sense as far as, OK, let's go. Let's go make some quick cash real quick. Yeah. Why don't you mention Heat? Because I, I thought you might have a, an homage to Heat, that gun battle on the rooftop at the towards the end of the movie. That looked oh, like yeah. Heat to me. <laughs> oh, really? Thank oh, you, yeah, man. absolutely. Well, it's a it's a nice. it's a tribute, of course. Yeah, well, uh, that location. Oh my gosh! Um, and and we shot that all in about thirty minutes, about forty five minutes. We had no choice as far as the sun was going down, whether we liked it or not. But um, but uh, I I don't know. I guess the scenario. I guess the scenario and then also the, 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 the helicopters maybe that we, that we put in in post. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. I love me some Michael Mann. And well, I got to say real quick, the strangest thing in the delivery room when my child was being born eight months ago, 
or not in the, not in the room, but in the waiting room. Guess who was sitting there waiting for his granddaughter to be born? Michael, man. No kidding. Couldn't believe it. Now, Couldn't you, took believe the, it. you took the chance to go say hi, right? That was your once in a lifetime. Well, well, my dad talked to him. I didn't talk to him. I didn't talk to him. It was like five minutes. Yes. I should have done it. I oh know, my gosh. I know. Well, you used to have like, that story now to tell Michael your kid Mann? when you get older. Michael Mann was there. Here's the movie he did, but I, was, I didn't get to meet him. My dad, grandpa. It's one of those things. It's, it's a good example of like where if you have a chance, just go do it because you might not have that chance when you come back. You know what I mean? I told myself, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him when I come back. No, he wasn't there. <laughs> but, but, uh, but anyways, crazy kind of coincidence, right? Weird. Oh, definitely. And, and tell me about yeah. shooting in LA. What are the challenges in shooting in LA? Cause I know a lot of productions leave California, but since your yeah. movie was all central Los Angeles there, what, what were the challenges shooting there? Uh, for us, we, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm not really trying to shy away from what we didn't have, how we had to shoot this film. I think it's an important uh, part of the story. Uh, um, we had, I'll keep this short, but we had the money that we thought we needed uh, um, before it fell through. And then we started back from scratch as far as finance is concerned. This was three years ago, four years ago. They got to a point where one of my friends said, Hey, here's five grand. You know, if this can help. Let me know. And we ended up just going and shooting the movie with like five grand. We spent about 6,800 bucks on production. I know people don't really care too much about budgets, but to answer your question, you know, we did this without permits. We did this without uh, any gills. We did this without, um, you know, a lot of the things that a lot of people need. Gorilla style. Yeah. Gorilla style. Total gorilla style in like three, three person crew, you know, most of the time. I mean, I would say 30% of the film is me and Joe and the camera. And we have him mic'd up and we have a great, don't get me wrong, we have a great uh, post sound editor, sound dialogue mixer and, um, you know, color correction and, and a lot of things we can do and we did with, um, with what we had. But the point is, um, I don't know what it's like to shoot in L.A., nor like how, normally, how it's normally done. All I know is to, like, shoot guerrilla style in L.A. I've done two features here and a couple of shorts so far. And the good news is uh, when you only have a camera and, like, two people and you don't have a boom mic, um, people don't seem to respect you too much, so they don't really bother you too much. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean you're not filming and, 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 right. uh, and capturing what you need, but, but yeah, so that's just my truth. I mean, honestly, um, we well, have you, not had any issues at all. Yeah. Well, you use locations like, you know, I love the orange grove you use for the car chase and the chasing and also oh, yeah. the energy windmills. So you make the most of what LA has in the background to give it character. Well, it's funny because that is Ojai actually the, uh, the orange groves, um, which you wouldn't know it, but, uh, uh, yeah, just like a giant orange grove field. And uh, the idea for that too was, you know, it's a nasty kind of, you know, messed up story. It's a crime story, you know, about criminals doing some nasty stuff. But I always knew I wanted to try and like make it the visuals and the locations as bright and as like kind of contrasting as possible to that. And like when you see that, when we saw the orange grove, it's like, oh my God, we have to shoot here. You know, it's perfect. It wasn't written in the script as an orange grove, but um and again, that's like the way you have to shoot this stuff. Sometimes you go and you look at a location, you, you remain open-minded and, and hopefully you find something even better than what you had thought, you know, but it's all there. Why not shoot it? You know, you don't have to recreate. I mean, it's a beautiful place and you can do so much in, in this place. And if you're small and you can move quick, then it's not that hard to just go and, you know, if you have a nice plan in place. And, and tell me about casting Patrick uh, and Joel Hogan. How did you find him? Um, I so he was in my last film. I, found, I met him in the audition room for my uh, previous film, Actor for Hire, this comedy about actors in Hollywood. And um, he played a, a big, he played an A-lister in that. And he played a version of himself as everyone did in that film. Um, and, but yeah, we met in the audition room for that. And he was just as cool as he could be right off the bat. We just got along and he did that film for me. And then afterwards, you know, it started dying down. We said, what are we going to do next? And we're sitting in Molly Malone's in, the, in Hollywood. And um, I'm like, I want to do a crime movie. I want to do a thriller. I want to do, or at least try to do one. I want to do something that has like all the kind of typical classic noir elements, but have maybe a twist and a turn. Hopefully let's try, you know, every five or 10 minutes. And I want you to be the guy, you know, and um, he was down. And we had talked a lot about just changing his looks and all that stuff. What can we do with not much money, but we can still do and make it help you know, help with uh, the production, you know? So and what if we, what if you had five different looks for this movie as pain as, as a pain in the ass as that's going to be like, what if we can do that? You know, stuff like that. He was just down from the, from the beginning and a good friend. So he had a shorthand. 
Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a big Disney fan. So I was wondering if there's a reference in your movie. He was at the Buena Vista Hotel Room 406. And Buena Vista Street is where the Walt Disney Studios is in Burbank. So I didn't know if that was intentional or? <laughs> I didn't know. I know. I guess the, uh, we had to come up. We had, I had a name. What was my name in the script? I think it was just like LAX Motel, exterior, whatever. Um, but when we knew we needed that piece of dialogue, that was a pickup shot, actually. We came up with, uh, I think Joel actually came up with the Buena Vista, I believe, as an improv piece, I think. But total accident. No, no, no hidden meaning, yeah. And one of the most difficult roles in the movie, and tell me about casting the delivery man role. Was that difficult, Serge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was so, we, uh, we, we, we uh, auditioned a lot of backsides, you know, people walking away from camera. And ultimately, I decided I would probably be best for the role, you know, a little selfishly, uh, like Your a Hitchcock, Hitchcock moment. moment. Your Hitchcock Yeah, moment. yeah. Only sure. the back of your head, though, but, you know. Yeah, and a little bit of my Jerry curl that I had going on time the afro yeah and of course you got your parts uh, your post marvel scene in the movie so stay through the credits because i was reading the credits <laughs> oh. and, and so was that a last minute addition there what um, not to give anything away yeah uh, uh the, the okay yes um it's funny because this film was originally uh much more non-linear um and then, then when we started editing it seemed like it just didn't want to work as well unless we just put it more into like a hero's journey chronological so that end scene, without saying what it is, uh, was meant for right after that dishwashing scene that we were talking about. And when it, we, it just didn't seem to, it just seemed like you're jumping around in time too much. It just seemed to slow that first reel down. So we just kind of got to it. But I didn't want to lose it because it was such a fun little moment. So what if we just put it back there at the end? And, and really for me, the, the, the relevance of it is the fact that um, it is the first, uh, it's really almost the real inciting incident, if you will. It's like a, it's the first time where things do start happening that, that does end up kind of sparking the entire story, I think. And it's kind of fun for me to just to throw it at the very end. A little ironic contrast. Well, Marcus Mizell, uh, writer, director, producer, and extra in Chameleon. <laughs> uh, congratulations on your film. I really enjoyed it. It had, it had a great mood oh, and you. great style. And, and where can people find it? Thank you. Um, May 19th, uh, next Tuesday, or this Tuesday, May 19th, um, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be on all the satellite uh, on demands. It'll be on the cable on demands. It'll be on, um, uh, you know, Amazon, iTunes, Fandango now, all those places. Hopefully, wherever you watch films, you can search for it uh, this Tuesday, and it'll, it'll pop up for you. Well, excellent. Thanks for talking to me today, and uh, when Vegas reopens, you got to come visit us. I, w I sure will. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs>